Well, it's the first time a court has forced the Federal Reserve to reveal the names of banks that borrowed from its oldest lending program, the 98-year-old discount window. It's in response by a request from the parent company of Bloomberg News, Bloomberg LP, regarding the emergency loans that the Fed made to banks back in 2008. Today, a spokesman for the Fed said it would fully comply with the court's decision to make that information available. The editor-in-chief of Bloomberg News, Matt Winkler, joins me now to discuss the significance of the case. Matt, thanks so much for coming on. And as you and I were talking during the commercial break, history was made today. Why? That's correct, Mark. Uh, the first time ever that anyone sued the Fed, and it's the first time anyone who sued the Fed won. What did we want to know from the Fed? We wanted to know the scope, the scale of unprecedented lending during the worst financial catastrophe in our lifetime, going all the way back really to the 30s to find something comparable. And let me put up on the screen what you said today after this news was announced. The Federal Reserve forgot that it is the central bank for the people of the United States and not a private academy where decisions of great importance may be withheld from public scrutiny. And you continued, the Fed must be accountable to Congress, especially in disclosure closing what it does with the people's money. The Fed forgot that it's the central bank of the United States. How yeah, so? I think, you know, long before uh, really the financial unraveling that we witnessed that started in 2007 and continued through 2008 and from which we're, we're finally recovering, the Federal Reserve got used to being secretive about all kinds of things. Now, that's mostly fine on day-to-day -day routine banking type transactions. But it started to become very worrisome when you had trillions of dollars literally at stake. Uh, it's all your money and mine really and put to all kinds of use that we've never seen before to raise uh, the level of um, rescue for all kinds of financial institutions. Well, those in support of the Fed would say that these were exigent circumstances. We were in the middle of an emergency. They right. did what they had to do. This is true. We are a democracy, mm -hmm. and uh, transparency has to be at the center of a democracy. And, you know, you could think about it another way. We got into the mess that we did because of so much financing in the dark. And at least what we could get out of it was a rescue that was transparent and that we could see exactly what was being done to rescue so many financial institutions that got into trouble by financing in the dark. And one of the concerns was raised by the Clearinghouse Association based here in New York. It's processed payments among the banks since 1853. And it said that in trying to shield the documents from disclosure, the Clearinghouse invoked an FOIA exemption, a Freedom of Information Act exemption that covers, quoting here, trade secrets and commercial or financial information obtained from a person and privileged or confidential. Basically, they were saying, I guess in, in, in layman's terms, in this was something that's in the national interest and it should be kept secret. Right, but that was never demonstrated in any sense to the court. And that's why the court three times, actually three courts, ruled that uh, there was no indication whatsoever that any kind of jeopardy was in place because of uh, the uh, secrecy. How many bailout programs how much information from these bailout programs are we looking for? Well, it's dozens, uh, to say the least, and maybe uh, scores. Um, literally at the height of the uh, uh, catastrophe, when uh, we had credit markets seizing up everywhere, the Fed was literally everywhere in the country uh, shoring up uh, banks um, that could not get access to money. But Matt, you know what the argument was on the other side. The Fed had said that if it identified banks that drew these emergency loans, it could cause a run on the institutions, undermine the loan programs, and potentially hurt the economy. But you mentioned transparency. How do you weigh those two? Is it just what you said? Is it about, well, in a democracy, the chips are falling where they may or where they have to, but there must be transparency? Actually, the evidence, Mark, overwhelmingly shows that where there is transparency, even in a crisis, even in the financial crisis that we went through, 
the more transparency there is, the greater confidence there is. And one example of that is one of the biggest institutions that had to be rescued was Citigroup. Yes. And when it was disclosed the extent of Citigroup's financial difficulties, actually the stock market, the bond market, just about every financial asset that day at that event rallied. And it rallied because it's not what we know that's going to hurt us. It's what we don't know that hurts us. Matt, uh, when the late Mark Pittman was working on this story, what type of pushback did he get? How hard was he, what was it for him to try to initiate this? Yeah, you're talking about a wonderful beat reporter. Yeah. And in the classic sense of a beat reporter, he every day requested information from the Fed, and uh, which led to formal requests for information under the Freedom of Information Act, and they were repeatedly rebuffed. Uh, and it got to the point where uh, he wasn't hearing anything, he wasn't getting any response, and that led to our um, seeking a legal remedy uh, to obtain this information, which led to the uh, lawsuit. What happens now? Well, uh, fortunately, we are belatedly going to see the very data that Mark Pittman was seeking three years ago um, for the first time. We are getting reports, uh, wire service and broadcast reports, that under the Obama administration, some of these similar requests under the Freedom of Information Act are being rebuffed and the report suggests that perhaps they are being done for political reasons and now Congress is looking into that. Chairman Darrell uh, Issa is actually uh, asking for documents related to this. When you hear stuff like that, what do you think as, as, as a journalist? Well, I hesitate, you know, to judge something that I'm not completely familiar with. Okay. In our case, uh, we were unsettled by, on one hand, a commitment by the administration when it took office to be completely transparent and open and uh, approving of, you know, essentially the Freedom of Information Act process. Obviously, during the uh, suit uh, that un unfolded with the Fed, uh, the administration initially didn't share that interest, and so that was unsettling. However, uh, once we got to the courts and once it became apparent that uh, the argument we were making really was uh, in the court size, in the public interest, the Obama administration, to its credit, uh, no longer pursued the case. So, uh, you know, here's hoping that once the facts are transparent, mm -hmm. are uh, made apparent and public, that uh, whatever political um, agendas exist. If they do exist, they fall by the wayside. Matt, in our last minute, what does today's decision mean for journalists in the United States of America, and what does it mean for those people who felt that maybe government would have the upper hand and could do what they wanted to and that the rules did not apply? Well, first, let me say, this is a great country. We are really blessed. Uh, as journalists to be working and living in the United States because there is no country I know of where you have the opportunity, if you are so motivated, to pursue the public interest uh, in every possible way, journalistically but also legally. And I can't think of any place where you can do that to the extent that you can here. So I would say it's a great day for journalism as much as it's a great day for the U.S. All right, Bloomberg News Editor-in-Chief Matt Winkler joining me on set. Matt, good to have you on. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you.